On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Amazon launches their first Kuiper Internet satellite, Northrop Grumman partners up for the next NASA space station, and a new thermal imaging satellite is going to change the way we develop our cities. This is The Space Race. Amazon has finally launched their initial round of Project Kuiper communication satellites, beginning the first real competition to the SpaceX Starlink internet service. The October 6th launch was completed by the United Launch Alliance aboard one of their Atlas V rockets. A pair of test satellites were loaded into a payload fairing and launched at about 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Project Kuiper is Amazon's version of the SpaceX Starlink service, using a constellation of relatively small satellites to cast broadband internet to customers by bouncing signals between the ground and the vehicles in orbit. As usual, Amazon is fairly tight-lipped over exact specifications of their hardware. They even had the ULA cut the live feed just before vehicle deployment started in the upper atmosphere. But we do know that while Starlink can functionally provide anywhere from 50 megabits per second to 150 megabits per second with its standard package, Amazon is advertising up to 400 megabits per second with Kuiper. This is largely due to Amazon's 12 ground relay stations, which aren't built yet, and SpaceX has applied for their own ground station permits, so the two seem neck and neck for capabilities, with the exception of SpaceX actually having operating hardware. Obviously, Musk's company does have a bit of a head start in that department with an estimated 3,500 satellites currently providing service, but Blue Origin has a plan to catch up and an FCC license to launch 3,236 new Kuiper sats by 2026. Originally, these were due to go up on the new ULA Vulcan rocket, but with delays continuing for the ULA's new vehicle, and their own New Glenn rocket still in the prototype phase, Blue Origin purchased a ride on nine Atlas V rockets instead. They also made contracts with Arian Space to use their Arian 6 rocket, which is also experiencing delays. The obvious choice here would be to make use of SpaceX to launch the Kuiper Constellation, but it seems that Bezos is holding a bit of a grudge and is willing to get sued by his shareholders for it. But it seems like the company is only wasting time. Back in July, Amazon announced its plan for a 100,000 square foot satellite processing plant at Florida's launch and landing facility in NASA's Kennedy Space Center. This facility would be where Amazon would receive completed satellites from their factories, inspect them, and process them for launch on a nearby pad. Once Blue Origin is able to get their rockets up and running, of course. We probably don't have to remind anyone that the FCC only just closed their mishap investigation into Blue Origin's New Shepard vehicle two weeks ago and demanded organizational changes as one of its requisites for a new launch license. This leads to the obvious question. If Amazon and Blue Origin keep stumbling around with delays and inefficient organization, then how exactly are they continuing to operate? Aside from the obvious wealth of the company, the real thing to note here is the contracts Blue Origin holds with government agencies, specifically the US military. Again, this is not something Blue Origin has over SpaceX. Musk's company also has a lot of important military contracts, but Project Kuiper is built to directly link with the DoD's mesh network of low Earth orbit satellites. Back in October of last year, Amazon's execs sat down with folks from the military to discuss using Project Kuiper to enhance the speed and reach of the military's orbital network, and they agreed. These first two Kuiper test satellites will reportedly also be testing the laser communications uplink with those very systems, meaning the DoD is very interested in getting Amazon caught up to competitors like SpaceX. Amazon and Blue Origin certainly have their work cut out for them. It would be much easier if they just asked SpaceX for some help, but it seems like they're fine with going it a bit slower. It is Amazon's MO to see what the competition is doing and then undercut their prices to kill off their business. So who knows, maybe they can do that with broadband satellites. On October 4th, Voyager Space announced that they would be partnering with veteran aerospace company Northrop Grumman to build a commercial space station for NASA, meaning that Northrop Grumman would be backing out of their previous solo contract to do the same. Voyager, and more specifically its subsidiary NanoRax, was already planning their own station called Starlab, due to launch as a single flight project sometime in 2028. Some of you might remember last year's orbital cutting tests from the NanoRax team, who were attempting to showcase their orbital cutting technology. At the time, the company believed they could make use of this tech to recycle old rocket hulls for commercial use as station modules, something that Starlab could facilitate once complete. The original vision hasn't changed much yet, 
The station is designed as a science park, allowing NASA and anyone who pays to gain access to a slew of modern microgravity laboratories. Really, the only thing to change so far is that Northrop Grumman will be contracted to supply the station with an upgraded version of their Cygnus cargo drone for the first five years or so. Back in 2021, Northrop Grumman, along with NanoRacks and Blue Origin, were selected as part of NASA's commercial low Earth orbit development program to design and construct new stations that the administration could use once the ISS is deorbited at the end of this decade. This is part of NASA's new tactic of providing commercial entities their expertise and some funding in exchange for letting them make use of any new facilities and technology that comes out of the deal. But while the other two are going strong, Northrop Grumman has apparently decided their plan wasn't going to be feasible. To be fair, Northrop Grumman has been mostly an infrastructure company for some time now. Their Cygnus cargo vehicle is reliable for sure, but they're a company that's more used to making parts rather than pursuing large, complex projects on their own. Aside from that, they likely didn't have the funding to finish. NASA gave each company some funding for the research and prototyping, Blue Origin got $130 million, NanoRacks got $160 million, and Northrop Grumman got $125.6 million. Amazon-owned Blue Origin definitely had the capital to make a station all on their own, and NanoRacks is funded primarily by Voyager Space and had technology all ready to go for station building. So it looks like Northrop Grumman made a pragmatic decision to help the other small company challenge one of the billionaires. And it's probably for the best. Starlab seems like a solid plan for a station, and Northrop Grumman are seasoned professionals at cargo running. The only thing they had to give up was the rest of the research funding. NASA says the remaining $89 million will be spread among the active projects, including the new Northrop Grumman Voyager Partnership and Axiom Space, who have been working on their own station using a habitation module from an earlier experiment. It must be pretty rough to realize you can't effectively compete with other companies, but Northrop Grumman is definitely making the smart move here, so let's hope they see lots of contracts. The first images from the new HotSat-1 thermal imaging satellite have just been released and the resolution is wild. Run by London-based company SatView, the HotSat-1 represents a huge leap forwards in thermal imaging technology, opening the door to some extremely important uses for the type of images we are seeing. Take these first images for instance. The initial crop of red and blue scale pictures were taken of urban areas in Chicago and Las Vegas. As with most thermal imaging software, the darker and bluer an area is, the colder it is, and vice versa for heat. The big difference with HotSat 1 is the level of detail. Before this new satellite, thermal imaging of this type had a resolution of only about 100 meters or so at its finest, and this is mostly because of how difficult it is to snag a thermal image. Some thermal imagers have been able to shoot very fine detail shots, but those techniques can only show current thermal properties, not change over time. For that, a lengthier exposure time is needed because thermal wavelengths of light are longer, meaning a slow shutter speed has to be used, even though most satellites travel at about 7 kilometers per second. HotSat 1 is equipped with a mid-wave infrared camera, and more importantly, better tracking software to keep the lens pointed at the target more smoothly. And the results speak for themselves. Remember earlier when we said previous imagers could only grab resolutions of 100 meters at the finest detail level? Well, these new images from HotSat 1 are at 10 meters of resolution, 10 times finer, and it can even take short videos. So obviously this is the sort of thing that gets firefighters and climatologists excited. Catching a good view of a moving wildfire front or the heat mixing of a body of water in finer detail is wonderfully helpful to both those fields. But for really the first time, HotSat 1 is letting a whole new field make use of thermal imaging, city planners. 100 meters of resolution is fairly useless for catching building to building evidence of heat loss or gain, but 10 meters, that's a whole new ballgame. Look again at the pictures of Chicago and Las Vegas. You can see the bright lines of individual streets, not just highways, and the patches of parking lots. You can see most buildings are relatively cold because insulation generally does a good job, but that industrial buildings like oil tanks and processing factories are very hot. And in some places, like Satview's native England, homes are generally much older and have worse insulation. HotSat 1 could point out exactly which buildings need fixing. 
Aside from that, a lot of work is being done in modern city planning to get rid of these heat islands as they're called. These are pockets of open air parking lots and knots of roadway that largely contribute to the higher heat range of most cities, and we knew that before Hotsat 1, but it's hard to plan mitigation options when the roadway you're trying to see is actually a patchy blur. This technology is just a start, of course. SatView has a plan to get a constellation of 8 to 10 satellites up eventually. It is honestly wild to see satellite thermal imagery go from being useful for just weather pattern data to helping us build our homes and cities more efficiently. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.